The international aid organization Doctors Without Borders is warning that hundreds of thousands of people displaced by the recent volcanic eruption in eastern Congo are at risk of infection by cholera. The eruption of the Nirangongo volcano near the city of Goma over a week ago sent residents fleeing in a mass exodus that was chaotic and terrifying. Many who fled ended up in nearby Sake. Many of them, hundreds of the children, separated from their parents as they left. DW's Maria Muller reports now from Sake on some of the youngsters still waiting to be reunited with their parents. The Nyiragongo volcano is still fuming, over a week after the devastating eruption. And it's still impacting people in its vicinity, like six-year-old Ezra. He lost his parents in the chaos when he and his family fled in panic. This child has been found. You will take him to your home because we wait to find his parents, so he will stay with you. Bahati Baitizie works as a volunteer for the Red Cross. His job is to register children who have been separated from their parents. According to the UN, nearly a thousand children were reported missing after the eruption. Of them, Bahati and his colleagues have been able to reunite 700 with their parents. Bahati found Ezra among other children on the street. He's the third child he's taken in. Bahati already has six children of his own. I sacrifice the little that I have that God has given me. That is what I feed the children, but I still struggle. At least they can still afford a simple meal. Many others are fighting over essential goods. People here are desperate, they're telling us, there's not enough drinkable water. Instead, they drink the water from the lake, which is not clean and can cause cholera. And as you can see right behind me, aid workers really struggle to provide the people with the most basic goods, like flour. Many of the 400,000 people who fled the eruption come here to the town of Sake. There are no shelters. People are sleeping in schools or inside this church. The living conditions have become very bad. Markets have no food. Personally, I'm not making a living. I'm now poor. Naomi was taken in three days ago. She'll never forget the moment when the sky turned red. I told my mom, Mom, look, the volcano is now on fire. We got out and many were fleeing. That was when we lost each other. I was very afraid, I was shaking. I was not even able to run to the house. She thinks she knows where her parents might be, but it's far away and transportation is expensive. After I find mom and dad, I would like to move here because I like it here. Playing on the lava of a past eruption. Ezra and Naomi hope to be reunited with their parents soon. And our correspondent, Mariel Miller, who filed that report, joins us now from Goma. Mariel, what's the situation on the ground there now? The situation here in Goma is calm at the moment, so the city is still emptier than usual, um, but people have been returning, so the people who have been evacuated last week uh, are slowly returning, or people who have crossed the border to Rwanda, for example. But if you go 30 kilometers to the west, um, to the town of Saka that you have seen in the report, um, there are, uh, the situation is actually dire, so people really struggle to get drinkable water, as you saw in the report, and it's quite dangerous because, uh, as you also mentioned, um, um, there is the, the looming threat of an Ebola, um, sorry, of an um, cholera outbreak. So, um, because they are now trying to drink the water from the lake, the nearby lake here, Lake Kivu, uh, and this is uh, a risk for, for the people. And also, Doctors Without Borders, um, yeah, also warned of a, of a potential cholera outbreak. Yesterday, we heard of some uh, reports, or we, yeah, we heard from some reports of um, eight uh, cholera cases um, from some uh, local administrative leaders. Um, but that hasn't been confirmed yet with health organizations. Now, many people who fled Goma are still unable to return, uh, in some cases because their homes have been destroyed by lava. How are these people coping? 
So yeah, there are 4,500 homes destroyed and 20,000 people actually affected. That's according to the UN. So these people uh, are left with basically nothing. They have um, no food, as I said, no water. Um, you know, there is a lack of sanitation and medical treatment. Um, also, as I also mentioned in the report, there's no shelter. So it's really difficult. People sleep out in the open. They sleep in uh, churches, in schools, in mosques. Uh, they are lucky if they have relatives or you know family members, neighbors who can take them in. But the government is also concerned that there might be uh, a COVID uh, um, a spread, uh, easier spread of COVID because of that. Hmm. Mount Niragongo, it's uh, an active volcano. Past eruptions have been catastrophic. Is the government there doing enough to monitor it and protect people living near it? So the short answer to this is no, the government uh, didn't do enough. Uh, the long answer is that there is a Goma Volcano Observatory, which is in charge of this monitoring of the volcano. And um, they did this job until last year, until the World Bank stopped its funding. Um, they actually uh, declined a, a renewal of a four-year, $2 million funding program. And since then, this observatory, as a senior volcanologist told me, were not able to even pay their internet bills. So they didn't have any internet Connection. They could not um, know what is going up uh, on up there on the volcano. They could not do basic checks on the monitoring of its activities. So it's quite crucial to have internet. And um, he also sounded very frustrated when he talked to me. He said uh, the government should have stepped in. They should have paid that, and then maybe things could have been prevented. Mariel, thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you for your reporting. Our correspondent Mariel Müller there in Goma.